as Ivan, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you very much. Uh, and where are you right now? In, uh, in, in Thessaloniki. Thessaloniki in Greece, yeah. yeah. You're uh, yeah. in Istanbul, right? Where you met Zap as well. Yeah, yeah. We, we met Zap in Istanbul and the whole founding team lives in Istanbul and the rest of the team is living in another cities of Turkey and Europe. So uh, we are a reboot native company. So the team is working basically uh, from anywhere in the world. <laughs> thank, thank you for joining yeah. us. Let's uh, let's kick it off. So would you like to thank share you. some information about your background and how Refine got started? Of course, we we are three founders, uh, me, Aaron, and Omar, and we are we are working like more than fifteen years together. We are like best friends, and we have been part of many big projects in Turkey. We started from some e-commerce business, then we used to manage the largest uh, online dating uh, platform of Turkey. So at one point, our passion for software was so big, so we decided to. Uh, found a, a, a software development house. This was primarily uh, for our own brands, producing for some software products, but we also did some consultancy and uh, external projects for some big enterprises in Turkey, like the big uh, telco companies. So uh, at that time, uh, at that time, we started uh, doing some open source projects and sites projects. This were basically for the promotion of the company and hiring new talents because developers especially love to work on open source projects. So this was a, a very good motivator for hiring people. Uh, if you if you are doing some boring stuff like some enterprise applications, it's always a very good offer to the developer for saying you will also join some. Uh, OSS projects and uh, this will good for your own development or education purposes and you will uh, see how the community works and whatever and this uh, and this method really worked and our software house were, was uh, one of the popular ones in Istanbul that time so uh, at one point our site projects started to become uh, somehow popular among the community the our team was uh, had a front-end focus and they were especially uh, uh, fluent on the React side. So uh, we, our first developments, our first projects were some React boilerplates, like some, uh, like some application boilerplates with all the architecture, with the build tools. Uh, and this, is the, 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 this was the exact same thing what we were uh, using for our projects inside the company. So uh, this, the, the open so making this boilerplate open source was like sharing our best practices, a, a great attraction. So then the thing evolved to Superplate. It was like a, a open source, uh, React project creation wizard, <laughs> I can say. It was a CLI tool. It was a developer tool. This time, we, uh, we would have uh, offering a rigid a boilerplate which the, in which the whole parts are fixed. This time, we, we made it in a wizard style so the developer can choose the, uh, the technologies and the technology stack they prefer. So, for example, you, you start with a React project and the Superplate wizard asks you uh, if you are doing a Create React app or you would go for Next.js or the Remix, then next question is the which uh, router you would, uh, you want to use. Uh, so, we, uh, in a question and answer style, in the end, uh, Superplate creates the, the the your React boilerplate, your starting points, and the uh, and all the technologies were uh, offered like options. So this was the first time we had a great traction in an open source tool. It was featured on Product Hunt. Uh, it gone over two K stars on GitHub, and so at uh, that that uh, that was a time we said so. Yeah, uh, this the, the open source. Uh, business is uh, very fascinating, and we 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 have now the we are reaching some expertise level on that, and we know how the community works, how the contribution works, because it's 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 very different managing an open source uh, tool or utility or pro project from doing uh, your 
from doing a closed source one inside the company or uh, the, the, the culture is different, uh, the interactions with all developers are different. So the, this is this is something you you learn with time and the, these uh, these projects were a really great warm up for us. So uh, then we, then we we feel ourselves ready for the greater ones. So at that time, uh, the refines idea come out because we we were doing uh, some big enterprise applications for for our customers or our own brands, and there was always this problem. You, you the, in the project, you develop the public facing parts like the mobile applications, the web application, etc. And uh, after that, uh, the project is never finished. You still have the 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 things uh, you don't see on the top of the iceberg. There are the, the the some there are some tools, some internal tools to use inside the organization, like admin panels, CMS tools, dashboards, internal tools, etc. And it took some tremendous time of developer resources and energy every time. So it's. Uh, the, these uh, crowd heavy applications, which have which have many different screens, many of forms, tables, models, are the specific examples for an admin panel. And, and on inter enterprise level, it's always very very boring for the, for, for the developers to to start and uh, cope with that type of project. So uh, we we always we were always facing uh, the fact that um, that we. Uh, we need some developer resource uh, uh, on that side of the projects, and we started to look for some alternatives like no code and low code tools uh, available in the market. This, this, uh, many of the times they they don't fit some real life situations. If the projects are large, uh, have larger scale, if you are working with big teams, because you always need some. Uh, you always you you need speed, but in the same time you always need some type of flexibility because you 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 have to customize the styling and design. You 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 should add your own business logic. You have to tweak the the, the different aspects of the project. And so the developers want hundred percent control uh, on the uh, uh, on the crowd projects if they are, if they are especially uh, developing large scale enterprise applications so they they don't tend to prefer the the the, the existing solutions which are very really rigid and they uh, they couldn't customize and uh, extend so uh, the refine was thought as a as a niche uh, in that sense it, it's a tool it's a tool for larger serious teams developing enterprise applications but not uh, happy with the, with the, the, the other solutions uh, allowing them so uh, the uh, we had an innovation on that point we, we designed refine in a very different applications from the competing products refine was uh, refine was headless it is, I mean here headless on the front end. And we all separated the logic for these crowd operations, like uh, the fetching data from the network, from the backend services, the state management, the 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 all the logic on the forms and tables, like sorting, filtering, pagination, etc. We we separated them from the whole UI logic, so we wouldn't we we don't pay, we don't uh, give some pre-made components to the users. We only give some React hooks and uh, special functions which you can use on all on your different uh, on your different UI frameworks or even your uh, custom style. This was the one of its kind uh, approach to uh, to the issue, and the, the the it was it has a great love and attraction from the community because being being headless and separating the concerns of all the uh, UI UX layer and uh, and to, uh, and the logic, then the, the then you give the developer the freedom to work with uh, the arbitrary any uh, design or uh, UI styling. You, they can use their favorite UI libraries or frameworks. So uh, so it found a sweet spot between speed and flexibility, and so the uh, the. The refine become uh, some of the uh, most popular uh, refine React frameworks for some CRUD applications and 
uh, enterprise applications. With Refine, how many times uh, did you launch and what did those uh, look like? So uh, in, in 2021, uh, on September, we did the first public launch of Refine. Uh, we, uh, at first, we just, uh, we just uh, made our internal repo public and uh, made uh, some announcements uh, to our friends and to the community. We already had some uh, very strong bonds in the in Turkey with the with the Turkish developers and the the, the community and uh, uh, the people. So they they also supported us uh, and tried the product and uh, give stars. Uh, made it made it made, they made be heard in the social media. So we 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 made a a good head start in the in the first days. Then uh, a couple, after a couple of months, we got or, or, or we got the first product count launch. Uh, if I remember correctly, Refine was the, 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 the third on that day or second. Uh, and so uh, it still uh, it still give, gave a, a great boost uh, to, to some uh, community metrics like the GitHub stars uh, and uh, and the users, uh, uh, but uh, it's like it was like a uh, it was like a snowball effect. So the the the, the whole events uh, come together, and it's it's it creates it, at some point it starts to create a, a real traction which we, which you can uh, see and get excited. This this was the beginning, and we had a uh, we had a successful fundraising on May. And uh, after that, uh, things got very much accelerated. So the uh, re from that point, Refine was uh, not a not side project anymore. Uh, the we dropped all other businesses and we gave whole hundred percent focus of three developers to the Refine project. We incorporated in USA, Delaware, and we moved all the team and all the IPs to the new company. And it was just the starting of a new era because if you don't, if you can, uh, if, if you are able to give your uh, whole focus to a project together as a team and not, uh, not interrupted for, for other uh, tasks and businesses, the, the, the real synergy uh, becomes to accumulate. And this was the case for us because the uh, uh, on all whole, whole metrics, we can see uh, that after May, our uh, marketing pipeline started to work and the, 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 the GitHub stars numbers and other community metrics have exploded. We started to, we started to measure the uh, the active users and other telemetry data, and uh, and we saw a great uh, sustained growth in the last quarter of the last year. After you did your uh, product hand launch and started getting you know much more usage, and and of course mm -hmm. after your funding too last May, uh, what did it look like for those first contributors to start getting involved? And how have you been navigating this? You know, from it was internal mm -hmm. originally, you open sourced it, but all of a sudden yeah. people probably came in saying, "Hey, let's do this, let's do that." So, how did you? Mm -hmm. How have you managed that process? What did it look like? Yeah, uh, yeah. The, uh, we had uh, we had a, a very good advantage with uh, contributors and community support uh, in the open source terms. Refine Core is a very lean library, so the the the, the core component is for the basic refine functionality plus the the headless option and many of the many of the extended features of the of refine is uh, given as ex external packages so the if you need some external connectors to for for connecting to strapi airtable sura like backends or if you need some connect ready made connectors for popular ui frameworks like the the material UI, the the ant design chakra or mantine. We 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 have a very big set of external packages for that. So it's 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 like in a plugin style, and so the so the con starting to contributing for uh, other developers other than the core team is very easy in that sense. They have a, a limited scope to for their own developments. They uh, they are not forced to learn all the, the, the course structure and contribute to refine core. 
uh, but they can easily like they easily develop some community packages for different backend connections, different uh, different UI framework bridges, and uh, many of many of the other functionalities which extends the refine. So. Uh, so many many contributors are uh, many contributors are going this way. Uh, if they, for example, they they are doing a project refine project for themselves or for the organization, but we don't have an official uh, official backend connection or backend connector. So they they develop it for for the, for their for the sake of their project, and uh, many of the times they are they are good to pay, share it with the community so we can. Uh, add this add it for it to our repository and make the announcement from our web website. And it's not only the, of course, it's not only the coding or the support from developers. Many of the contributors are working on our documentation pages, correcting our mistakes. They make translations. So the so the, the out, uh, outside the developers also we have many uh, great contributions to the project in that sense. That, that all sounds excellent. And Thank you. Being being an open source uh, project, how do you approach uh, monetization? Yeah, the, this is the I think this is the biggest and most challenging questions to uh, to an open source co-founder because you in your journey you 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 are asked this question million times. Yeah, if you are doing your uh, fundraising interviews, if you met VCs, if you met some angel investors, everyone is eager to know. Okay, and say okay, this is a great success. This is a great traction and. What will be the next part of the story? How will will become a, a self-sustained company behind the, uh, behind the, this project? So uh, the the answer was relatively easy for us because we 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 started uh, refine as a as an open core uh, business model and we uh, and uh, just in the release time of the open core component we we already know how to. Uh, what what should it uh, transform in the future uh, for monetization? Extending the success, you know, the for refine on the front end to the back end and DevOps side. These are like some easy authentication flows, some uh, one click deployment solutions, some audit log and document version things, and we have a, a bigger list uh, of some uh, enterprise features which are. Uh, tightly integrated with the uh, open framework and uh, and creates a bigger picture of a refined ecosystem. So this is a transformation for from being a uh, being a uh, open source uh, open core framework to a larger platform of some cloud tools, some uh, connectors, some other components, and this will this will uh, this will transform to a de facto uh, the development environment for the for for the bigger teams for uh, enterprise applications on the front end side so this was the vision uh, from the beginning and we have already started with uh, the, the, with our cloud features we extended or we grew our team now up to 10 people and some uh, some of people on the team are uh, focused on the the core development part and uh, some of others are working on the on the cloud options and the plans are uh, on this year we will feature by feature we are going to we are going to um, release the release our products and uh, this will be the we, this will be the part of the product which will uh, monetize the company and uh, make it live to live to forever this is this is very interesting if i very interesting you're going to move from being a framework to being a platform and yeah. the ends of it, yeah. and, and a lot of it comes from enterprises using refine. You know, asking for some new things. And you already mentioned how you hired more people, grew the team to ten. Uh, I'm curious to ask, um, were those people early contributors? Was it maybe part of the interview process to ask them to contribute mm -hmm. to refine first? Uh, curious yeah, what yeah. the process looks like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, we uh, the the core team the 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 initial team was already the 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 members of our our former former company so they uh, after the release they were already uh, working on the project and familiar with the code 
So uh, some of uh, some of some of our friends, uh, which were some uh, for former colleagues and early contributors of Refine, uh, were at that time working on other companies in Europe, and uh, they're working remotely for U.S. projects. And after we founded Refine, we we had uh, called them back. <laughs> so we said, uh, "Come on, we." Here's we have a very exciting project. You you used to be a member of this team, and maybe it's again the time to to get together and uh, uh, collaborate on that one. And uh, and they they were very positive. And to or three team members left their uh, new jobs and uh, come back for for refine and join the team. These were old friends. So uh, for the new team members, of course, we have the regular uh, interview uh, and onboarding process on, uh, on like um, and you see on many uh, IT companies, we just uh, interview, give a challenge, then uh, we evaluate it and make complete the hiring process. Oh, that's great. Um, and uh, so you already said that the biggest challenge was the monetization part. Yeah. Uh, you know the the rest of your career was you know building closer software now building yeah. uh, open source and being an open core company a anything else that has been a real challenge for you um curious to hear you know because we usually talk about the good things but we want to stress uh, of course of, of course of course uh the 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 biggest the, the biggest gain from an open source uh, project is you see the instant feedback of the of developers and communities so you know surely if the if there's a community product fit if the if if, if your product has some use real use cases in a, in a uh, because you 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 get the feedback from the social media you you see them on discord on your github is, uh, issues so you talk with people they 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 run your code they use your framework and build start to build something. This is both exciting and this is a great feedback. They give you uh, ideas, you can build your roadmap. And I think this is the, this is the best part uh, uh, of, uh, of the open source development. But at the same time, it is still very challenging because you, you, you see the people, you see some projects is built uh, with your technology. But they are not your users or customers. They are just some developers uh, uh, discovered your tool somewhere in the web. They liked it and they started to use you. You can't go and you can't go to you can't send some cold emails to them. You can't use their <laughs> you can't use your their work on somewhere else. You can uh, go and uh, try to sell something to them. These are these are just developers like you. These are you are not these are not customers in that sense. So the 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 the, the, the this is the one of the biggest challenging uh, on the open source side. If you are trying to build a company uh, out of it, and at some point if you have some commercialization plans, this is not like a SaaS business. You 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 have a, a funnel. Or people are onboarded. You offer them some uh, other packages. Then the, the life cycle of the user start. It, it's 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 a very different, and it was very uh, surprising to us being in in that type of situation. Sometimes you see from your uh, you 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 sometimes you see you from your analytics data that a very very big enterprise is using. Refine to be uh, to build something. You are curious. You uh, you want to know uh, what's going on. You want to reach out to guys and talk about the project, but you can't. You you just have some anonymous uh, secret data. <laughs> it's, uh, 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 you you only have that bit of information, but you can go further. So so this is one of the. One of the funny and uh, challenging parts uh, in the open source business, and uh, to solve this, of course, you you have to you have to support this with the commercial part of the application and separate the the, the all the layers of the open source part and the commercial part. Uh, thanks for sharing this with us. Yeah. Um, 
Is there any advice from other uh, open source founders or maintainers that you take to heart? Or is there any advice that you yourself would like to give to other founders? Hmm, let me think. Yes. Uh, okay, yeah, it depends. If you are if doing an, an open source for your so as a site project uh, and uh, this is this is one hundred percent joy and fun, I think. And so, uh, if you if you are if you find a useful idea, if you can create some traction, with people people surely will find you. Some contributors will join. It will create its its own community and ecosystem. And uh, and I think it's 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 uh, fully full of the develop joy of development. But if you are speaking from and uh, from as a business model from the from the open core model and uh, making a company out of it, uh, the, my only advice would be the having uh, have, uh, they, the 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 founders should plan everything ahead before even even starting the uh, open source parts. They, they should have a complete plan. For which projects are uh, they are going to do? Which parts will be the open source part? After that, which will be the monetization model? And uh, they they should they should uh, think about the fundraising process. And uh, they uh, they have they should have make plans for their for their fundraising round so uh, they can find the funding for the project. This 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 uh, turns out to be a much uh, bigger uh, picture and needs more detailed planning so the for a, for starting a business with an open core model uh, it's not it's not uh, enough to make a successful uh, open source component it it has it has many it has many many things uh, to think and uh, it will be it will be much easier a lifesaver for the developers if 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 they can do all the planning before they start their uh, project. Thank you. Thank you for highlighting it. And uh, and for a lot of people, you know, they they start with the open source project. They once mm -hmm. there's so much pool, and they're like, oh, I have to keep my job, or whatever. Usually, then they start thinking about those things. So yeah, yeah. it's it you 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 speak to the importance of those things if you want to have uh, you know a more a more yeah, smooth journey. Exactly. Ab ab absolutely. Absolutely. And right now, what what would you say the next uh, milestone is for Refine? cloud offering and the, after the, the the cloud product was is finished refine will seem more like a, a platform rather than being a simple uh, framework so options which are not available from only specific from the front end side but with integration of the front end and back end solutions the, the developers will be able to produce much more with uh, spending uh significantly less time so this Excellent. is and yeah this is this is the next big milestone for refine and uh, do you guys uh, usually you know try to give yourselves like oh we want to try to ship that until then or you know just just as a last note curious how you plan those development cycles and the roadmap pretty much uh, very short uh, uh, deployment cycles especially for the core product we what what is developed, we 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 ship it without waiting. This this is our philosophy. But uh, of course, for a for a commercial product like the cloud farm, the the the, the production cycles uh, getting length getting longer. But we still uh, don't want to do uh, a, a a very big uh, part of the software for working for on it like months and and set set and one time we. If we decide to deploy it and wait, if people will like it, people will lose it. This I I, I find this a very risky situation because if you uh, if you, if people are not accepting it, they if they don't find any use cases for using your product, you 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 wouldn't have we wouldn't have much time left to fix the fix it and try another option. So so the 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 better one is. Uh, Deploying some little features, feature by feature, one by one, and uh, and looking how the community and how their users respond. Because uh, so in that sense, you can keep the 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 loud one, popular one, and uh, build your roadmap 
on the preference of users mm -hmm. if some if some other features are uh, not very popular or not like from the community you can drop it so you can save your resources for for other trials and for other resources this is some basic product management <laughs> I, I am talking <laughs> here but uh, but we do, we should keep it because our uh, for for every company for every project or runway is limited this that we have limited options to try and see so we will we have to optimize our efforts and uh, okay. make 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 uh, products as much as possible mm -hmm. i love it as a as a closer would you like to maybe you know point people to the refine uh, repository and how they can get started today of course <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we have a, a uh, for Refine, we have our page on refine.dev and here on that website, you can find uh, links to the repository. We have a well detailed documentation. We have a quick start tutorial, you, which you can start your Refine project in just a couple of minutes and try it for yourself. And also we have a very detailed examples page. You can see there are 30 plus examples from some uh, ready-made e-commerce sites to to, uh, to some real life examples. And you can just uh, dive into the refine. I love it. So 